In this lecture, we're going to be discussing uh, photo filters and a couple of other things to, you know, complement it or supplement it or whatever it is. I really want to start to show you some of the other ways that we can do color corrections or color balances or color adjustments in our images. So to start off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a photo filter. Now, not a lot of people use them. They're just not quite sure what they're good for or how they can be used. So let's go and do that. Now, before we go in and bring them up, I just want to talk quickly about photo filters, where they originally came from. Back in the days of film, we would put a filter over the lens if we had uh, one type of film that we were shooting in a different lighting environment. As an example, most of the film that we buy or you guys buy uh, is daylight based. All right, so when we used to go to the store and buy our Kodak film or a Fuji film or Agfa films and all that stuff, it was daylight based, daylight balanced. All right, now if you took that film camera with daylight film and took a shot inside in your living room without a flash in the evening when you had your lamps turned on, you always notice that you had this orange glow to your images. And that's because of the color temperature given out by the incandescent lights and then the fact that your film was balanced for daylight. All right. So what we would do is, if we were in that scenario, we would actually put a filter over. All right. So I'd put a blue filter over to filter out or add in the blue that would have been missing from having too much, you know, the yellowish stuff come in. All right, so that's where filters uh, uh, started to come in, at least the ones that I'm gonna work with and show you. All right, so this image here looks like it has a little bit, it's a little bit on the cool side. Again, right out of the camera raw, no adjustments. A little bit on the cool side, all right? Whatever the as shot was or whatever setting that I had on the camera, mm, all right? So here we go, let's go under the, uh, Let's see, layers, new adjustment layer, ugh, and come down here and choose photo filter. All right, so I'm gonna just not even give it a name, I'm just gonna click OK to get to it. And you can see by default, we now have something a little bit warmer. By default, we're also in the warming filter 85. All right, and it's at a default density of 25%. They all come in at 25%. If I was to click on this menu, you'd see that we have about three different warming filters. We have three different cooling filters, all right? And these are the filter numbers specifically for professional photographers when we're looking to buy or add on a filter specific one. We just say, give me the number 80, give me the number 85 or the 82 or whatever, all right? And then, of course, there's always these other filters that were always available to us, such as a red filter, and black and white photographers in the film days would put a red filter on when they're shooting their skies and they would want the, uh, uh, the, the clouds to really, you know, have a lot of punch and kick to them, all right? They would use the red filter for that to get things to work that way, all right? Yellow filter, again, why would you ever use that? But a lot of these filters are, are, are black and white filters, all right? And one of the things I used to do is use a yellow filter when I was shooting black and white, what that does is it allows our skin tones to move up one zone. If you know anything about the Ansel Adams zone system, uh, our cameras are, are, are geared to meter for middle gray, but uh, uh, the average skin tone is not middle gray. It's probably about zone six. So using a yellow filter would take our skin tones up without having to do any other adjustments and all that kind of stuff. Anyways, I digress. We're back over here to the warming filter to add a little bit of warmth to this. I'm not sure, I'm totally convinced that that's the right amount. So what I generally do is come over here and I add this uh, uh, feature, which is I just set my opacity to 66%. All right, now I can turn it on and turn it off and say, okay, well, that could be an acceptable end result. I'm not saying it's perfect, but I'm saying it's an option, all right? The reason why I choose 66% is, again, with this, go to an extreme and then retreat back to something that's usable. I have wiggle room to go from 66 all the way up to 100, but also to reduce this stuff, all right? So if I'm at that two-thirds point, I can go greater or much less. All right, so I'm going to turn that guy off, and uh, I'm going to choose another filter in here. So let's just go down and choose another photo filter. Uh, this one here was the 
warming filter. So I'm just going to name this guy warming 85. That doesn't say warming. Warming 85. And this one, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to choose the, uh, the sepia. And I'm going to leave that at that value there, that value. I'm just going to come in here and put this at SEPIA. And there we go. So now I've got the sepia at 25%. And the opacity uh, of the layer itself is at 100%. You can see that there is a little difference. I'm going to come back down to this guy and say this, that, this, that. Hmm. Maybe I'm going to take that down a couple notches. All right. And come back to this guy and do that. Turn off this. Okay. Either one, again, either one are acceptable. Getting away from the cool tone that we have in here. So, you know, if we had an image that was a little bit too warm, we'd use a cooling filter. You might want to come in and use a blue. I'll let you experiment with the different warming ones in here. What's the difference between this one and that one? Very little, very, very, very little. It's more for specific films that were used and uh, they would be geared for that film in a certain type of lighting environment. All right. So now that we've gone through and I've shown you a warming filter and now I've shown you a sepia toned filter. Now what I'm going to do is I want to bring up a levels adjustment layer and I'm going to use the, uh, uh, the mid-tone eyedropper to click on an area. All right, let me explain that as we go through this. So I'm going to bring up a Levels dialog box here. All right, now inside the Levels dialog box, obviously we can see our histogram and all that kind of stuff, but we have these little eyedroppers here. All right, and we're going to, I'm going to show you about the black and white eyedroppers in a minute, but since we're talking about color adjustments and color balance, I thought I'd show you what some people call Photoshop's color balance tool, and that would be the mid-tone gamma or the gray point set gray point eyedropper. All right, so that's what we have here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click in some areas that I know are gray. I know they be to be neutral in some respect, and we'll see how we get our color shifts. So I'm going to click in this area right down here. I'm going to give it a click, and you can see that that warmed things up based on, you know, clicking on something that you know to be um, gray, or at least think you remember it being gray, uh, uh, will will change based on the kind of light that is actually falling on it, direct sunlight or not. So I can come over here and we went a little bit cooler. This gave me something a little bit warmer. If I come over here, I got something cooler again. And if I come over to this wall over here and click on that, that goes way wild. But you know, it's a no neutral, but, and there is a brighter no neutral. This is just absolutely going crazy, all right? So I think I'm kind of liking this a little bit better than that, that's for sure. But now, why don't I just take a look and see what this microphone is gonna do, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come down in this area here where it's kind of darkish, and I don't have any little speckling that I have there. I don't have any of the speckling down here. I'm just gonna click on that and see if that kind of does it for me. So I clicked in this area. I got a color balance adjustment. I clicked over here and it turned it too freaking warm. And I come over here and it doesn't do such a bad job after all. So let's see. That was there before. Now it's kind of warmed it up a bit. Notice that I'm always going to the warming up option. All right. So why don't I just come in here and double click and call this one set white balance. So we know what we did with that one. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this off and I'm going to bring up another levels adjustment dialog box. I'm keeping them all separate here so you can actually see and follow along at a later date. So I'm going to bring up a new one here. But what I want to do now is I want to adjust the histogram manually, all right, manually with the other thing. So I'm just going to call this one. individual channels, all right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into the RGB drop-down menu. I'm going to go to red. And we can see that my white is all the way over there and blown out. And I may want to pull that back. 
but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the red slider, shadow slider here, and bring it to where this stuff starts to drop off in right there. And then I'm going to come into the green, and I'm going to pull that one over until I get to about there. It looks like it's about there. And then I'm going to go to the blue. So far, it's looking pretty crappy. But when I start to bring the blue in, all of a sudden, wow, this is freaking amazing. I think this is probably one of the better adjustments right there. All right, we've played with the contrast and we got rid of that color cast by coming in and manually doing this. Hmm, wasn't there an auto feature that could have done this? Maybe. All right. Now, the other thing that the auto feature is not going to be able to do that I want to do is take a look at my histogram here, and you can see that I've got some blown out stuff up here. And that's, well, I mean, it's nondescript. It's part of a building, but I don't want it to be that blown out. So what I can do now is I can come down to what's known as my output levels, and I can actually take my output level, which is this is white, and I can actually pull it back. Now I'm going to pull it back to an extreme so you can see what's going on and you're going to see that these light shades over here will actually turn gray or darken anyways. See what that's doing? It's darkening all that kind of stuff. So what I'm thinking is I might want to just bring it back a little bit that way or better yet I'd probably want to make that adjustment on a separate all right, on a separate adjustment layer. So what I might want to do is come in and I know I'm just going through this and all that kind of stuff, but if I pull this back, see how if I pull this one back, I'm darkening my image where I pull it back on the other one, I was actually changing the color and that's why I wanted to do that. So I'm just going to say pull, this one's going to be called pull back on highlights. All right, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull this back a little bit to about 250, 249. All right, and then these two go together. All right, so if I turn that on and off, all right, so that might be fine and dandy, but I'm thinking that even this could go up to 252, which is slightly better than being 255. All right, and then it's a subtle adjustment, but it would pull back on the spiking and all that kind of stuff that's going on. So that's another way to make, and I'm, and I'm really, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm really excited. I think this is really good. This is really, really a good one. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is turn these guys off and I'm going to show you yet one more way to go about doing that. <clears throat> All right. And to go about doing this, we're going to actually set our black and our white points. All right, this is just going over the top as far as I'm concerned, but man, this is going to be something else. All right, okay, now. All right, so now that we're finished with this image, I'm going to get rid of that one. I'm gonna pull up one last one, <laughs> Sammy Zoolander. <laughs> All right, so this is daughter number three and she was just kind of hamming around in the backyard one day when I was out there, had my camera, don't know what I was doing, doesn't matter what I was doing. Again, right out of camera raw, nothing done to the image whatsoever. But what happens a lot of times when we're shooting people, all right, is that whatever they're wearing gets reflected into their skin tones. All right, and I think there's too much of this orangey reddish stuff being reflected into our skin tones. So what I did was I created a cooling filter. Isn't that something? So there's a cooling filter. I've turned the mask off so it's not going to be showing. Here's a cooling filter, all right, as opposed to a warming filter. I've reduced the density of that down to 10%. If I turn this on and off, you can see there is a difference. See it? All right. Now, I've also reduced the layer opacity down to 66%. It seems to be something that I enjoy doing on a regular basis. But what I want to do is I want to bring back the warmth that was originally in the top that she was wearing. So in order for that to happen, what I had to do is I had to start painting on the mask. And that's what I did. So I'm just going to hold the shift key down to enable it, all right, and to disable. And you can see, just keep your eyes on the top here and you'll see how it comes back to being more vibrant 
and there it is, less, more, less, more, less, more. Now, I'm going to hold down the Option key, and I'm going to click on the mask in the, in the layer panel there, and that way you'll actually see the mask that I have going on in here. All right, and white is revealing the cooling effect. Black is protecting. All right, so the the black that's being protecting is this is her arms up here, and then this is a gradient that I drew in. All right, with the gradient tool, black to white, coming in here to block off in a gradual fashion. All right, her top. And then I just went in with a black paintbrush and painted a soft edged paintbrush and painted in around her arms and all that kind of stuff in there and in her hair. All right. And in her hair, because I didn't uh, necessarily want the cooling effect to go on in her hair. I liked the extra warmth that's in her hair. So the painting up here did her sleeves and her hair and then the painting down in the lower left corner. All right. Helped this to come back to its normal and then the cooling effect is just on her skin tones coming down into here and a little bit on the bench and obviously the green stuff up here uh, whatever all right there you go that's uh, that stuff for working and adjusting with our images and the next thing I want to bring up is going to be a family portrait.